ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय न दात आत्म हि गुणम आदोषम न क्रियम पलम Translation. The Supreme Lord, Atma, the creator of cause and effect, does not accept the happiness and distress that results from fruit of actions. He is completely independent of having to accept the material body, and because he has no material body, he is always neutral. The living entities, being part and parcel of the Lord, possess his qualities in a minute quantity. Therefore, one should not be affected by lamentation. Report. The conditioned soul has friends and enemies and is affected by the good qualities and faults of his position. The Supreme Lord, however, is always transcendental. Because he is Ishwar, the Supreme Controller, he is not affected by duality. It may therefore be said that he sits in the core of everyone's heart as a neutral witness of the cause and effects of one's activities, good and bad. We should also understand Udasina, neutral, does not mean that he takes no action. Rather, it means that he is not personally affected. For example, a court judge is neutral when two opposing parties appear before him. But still, he takes action as the case warrants. Become completely neutral and deferent to material activities, we should simply seek shelter at the lotus feet of the supreme neutral person. Maharaj Ketu was advised that remaining neutral in such trying circumstances as the death of one's son is impossible. Nevertheless, since the Lord knows how to adjust everything, the best course is to depend on him and do one's duty and devotional service to the Lord. In all circumstances, one should be undisturbed by duality, as it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita 247. <coughs> Mate Sangos the Karmani. You have a right to perform your Padaya duty, not entitled to the fruits of action. Never consider yourself to be the cause of the results of your activities. And never be attached to not doing your duty. <clears throat> one should execute one's devotional duty, and for the results of one's action, one should depend on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Umgyan Namaste, Saraswati Devi Gaudavani Pacharine, Nirvase Sunya Vadi, Pastyakya De Sitarine, Vanshakopa to Rubis Chakri Pasindu Ve Pacha, Titaranam Pavane Dyo, Vaishnave Dyo Namaho Namaha, Jai Shri Krishna Jaitanya, Haru Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadahar, Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrindu Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Because the Lord does not have a material body, although he appears in the material world and performs activities sometimes similar to the conditioned soul's activities. He is not affected by the results of activities, nor the performance of the activities either. 
He remains neutral, but his neutrality is not something that he develops. It's just his nature to be indifferent or aloof from the effects of all activities in this material world. Sometimes they criticize the Lord, you know, why are why doesn't the Lord intervene in this material world and make it better? Why are so many people suffering? Still they're praying to the Lord, why this, why the Lord doesn't do this, why he does this. Well, they don't understand the nature of the nature of transcendence. The Lord is active, but he doesn't get involved with the activities of the conditioned soul. The conditioned souls are also pure spiritual energy, the doodle around association with matter, that pure spiritual energy is covered. We have the same quality of the Lord. We are not affected by the activities in this world. But because we identify with the body and the mind, especially the mind, we accept happiness and distress as part of life. And we're always, of course, the conditioned soul is always trying for to get the results of their activities in a preferable way and want to avoid the results of their activities in a way that is not in line with their desires. So therefore, the living entity is riding on the machine of the material nature. and explains that in the Bhagavad Gita, that just like a merry-go-round, you have these machines that, you know, they ride children on. They have these horses, and it goes round and round, and the horses are on these poles, and they go up and down, and the kids sit on them. It's a very playful game for the kids. But the conditioned souls that are on the same merry-go-round, well, they're not, they're not aware of it. They're going up and down. Padanum gurusango syo sarasad joni jam nasu. Uh, sometimes in the higher planets, sometimes in the lower planets, sometimes in the middle planets, constantly being shifted life after life, depending on the activities they perform in the collective lives of the previous. And this um, uh, this up and down, this up and down is there, and the round and the round is birth, death, disease, and old age. It continues to come and then it manifests itself. So we have different bodies, all because we have different activities performed in the material world, and we get a body accordingly, according to our particular desire. That is the, how the material energy functions. And it functions according to the arrangement of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Although he, effect, although he puts it in place, and the laws that govern the material energy are also his laws. He is aloof, as it says here, just like a judge will sit in a case deciding a particular uh, court case will be there. And, but he won't, uh, he's not affected by the activities he performs. He may have to award one man a million dollars <laughs> and he may have to send another person to jail but he's neutral he simply acts according to the situation so Krishna is like that too he is completely aloof from the results of activities but he performs activities in the material world just to uh, attract the living entities back to him back to the spiritual world. But the living entities, when they perform activities in this material world, we have a desired goal. We want something to happen, and therefore we work towards that goal. And then if we don't get it, we are either unhappy, or sometimes when it's something that we really want, we become distressful, full of anxiety, and there are also people who commit suicide because their life is not happy at all because their activities always bring them suffering. 
So this is the condition. So the conditioned soul also has that same quality as Krishna. We are not affected by the happiness and distress in this world, but because we identify with the mind and the body, we accept happiness and distress as part of life. But this is just the merry-go-round of the material energy. So therefore, as it says at the very end of the purport, one has to take the devotional service and engage. One cannot be free from the activities of happiness and distress that come by way of association. That association is of three qualities, goodness, passion, and ignorance. And each one of these qualities have a particular characteristic about them that manifests in a certain way according to the desires and the efforts of the living entities as they connect with that particular mode based on the quality of their desire. It's like if you wanted to make a lot of money, so you work in that way. So you're under the control of passion. You're under the, uh, the, uh, the middle energy passion. Therefore, you plan, you work, you scheme, you do whatever you can, and you're trying to fulfill your desire to uh, accumulate more and more wealth or somehow live in this. That's the mode of passion. The mode of ignorance is people don't really care about, you know, what happens. All they want to do is enjoy their senses to the max. And so they perform activities and they get a particular kind of results, which usually causes them to stress. And also it affects others also in a distressful way. And then there's the mode of goodness. People want to be nice. They want to, uh, <clears throat> they want to have a nice family. They want to have a nice material situation. They want to enjoy poetry, literature, art, music, and even perform pious activities by doing welfare work for people in general. And they, they get some pleasure from that. But then again, because the mode of uh, goodness is not is part of the three modes, it's not stable. Therefore, sometimes the mode of ignorance and passion jumps in. The mode of goodness is challenged by that, and people get different results to their activities. So no one can be happy in the material world. As Krishna says, Dukalayam Asasvatam, this place is meant for your suffering. Uh, some people think, not some, most people think, if I just keep working according to my plans, or if I don't have the perfect plan, I have to learn the perfect plan, and sooner or later I'll be happy. I can see other people are happy, therefore I have to pattern my life after them. I can learn from them. I can see what they're experiencing. I can be just like that. So this is an illusion, of course, because no one is happy and everyone is thinking others are happy by what they see from the external point. And therefore, this the world goes on simply struggling, happiness, distress, some relief from material miseries. Then again, the miseries come back. So this is the material. So that, the only way you can get out of that, there's no way out of it except taking to devotional service. And, and then as Prabhupada ends the purport, for the results of one's activity and devotional service, one should simply depend on the Supreme Personality. So learning, that's an art that one has to learn how to depend on the Lord in every situation. So one has to apply the principles that make up the activities of devotional service, such as hearing, chanting, worshiping, remembering the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and accept some um, duty in devotional service, and simply work in that way, and then depend on the Lord for the results. And because the results do not really uh, make a difference in the sense that our advancement in Krishna consciousness is not based on the results we get. Our advancement is based on the effort and the devotional mood that we apply 
in the activities we perform. And, and therefore, one has to learn to simply depend on Krishna. Just like this morning, here I am in a, I'm in a hotel room in New York right now, and uh, trying to get onto the Wi-Fi for this class. I had to um, make some arrangements because I wasn't able to do it. And then I was just thinking, okay, it's up to Krishna. And then I'll just make my arrangements to try to make it happen. And by Krishna's mercy, it happened. So we just depend on Krishna for everything, ultimately. Because he moves everything through his material energy. And for the devotee, he's always personally present in the life of a devotee to inspire the devotee by giving them the enthusiasm and the, um, the knowledge that they need to engage in his devotional service. And sometimes the results are preferable, and sometimes the results are not. Even these results are not within the modes of material nature, and if the activities in material world, these results are simply under the guidance of Shakti and the spiritual energy. And we still, we have to work with the material energy, and so a devotee just does their best, drives. My Krishna told Arjuna, yeah, I'm on the chariot, and that's nice, but you still got to fight. <laughs> you still have to do your duty as a Kshatriya. You're thinking, by not doing your duty, you will be better off. That's why Prabhupada said, one has to do their devotional service. But one has to completely depend on the mercy of the Lord for the results of the activity. And as long as they work sincerely in that way, then the results will come by the mercy of the Lord. And sometimes they uplift us, and other times they always uplift us if the mood is right. But if the mood is wrong, in other words, we become attached to thinking that my efforts are the efforts that make up the difference. We have to simply, de we have to use your intelligence and simply depend on it. So that intelligent part is, is something we have to acquiesce on ourselves. And to apply, to perform devotional service requires intelligence. And that means we have to understand that there is a way to perform the service along with the mood. Even if we have the proper mood, if we don't have the pro if we don't know the process of how to perform the service, although we will still get a good benefit in the sense that it'll uplift our consciousness because we're in the right mood. The mood is to please the Lord, not to satisfy our own individual interest. Still, we still have to perform activities. Therefore, when Krishna was instructing Brahma, he said one has to follow scriptural authority. And what he was referring to was Guru, Sado, and Shastra. One has to work according to the direction given by Krishna and the Shastras or the spiritual master who works and who teaches how to perform devotional service based on his knowledge of Shastra and his realization in practical activity. So everything is placed before us. We used to have to use uh, one. Sometimes the devotee would come to Srila Prabhupada and Prabhupada, and they would say, Prabhupada, I have no intelligence. And Prabhupada will say, well, get some. And that's all. <laughs> it doesn't, it's not an excuse. We have to get you, get the intelligence that is required in order to perform the activity. And that means hearing from spiritual master, hearing from the Krishna through the Shastras, hearing from the great souls who went before, and understanding, if there's no understanding or limited understanding, then one gets clarification by asking questions. It's like Arjuna was asking Krishna so many questions. Krishna was answering the questions. As his questions were being answered, Arjuna was becoming more clear about his duty. And at the same time, he was becoming more enthusiastic to execute his duty. 
So everything is given to us. We simply have to buy it. And uh, that's why we have to hear regularly. We have to hear regularly and learn not to be attached to our own way of thinking. We have to move. we have to develop that mood that is given to us by the spiritual master, by Krishna, by the great souls. And this works sincerely. And devotional service is nice. That's what it's very nice because everything is given to us. We simply have to make the effort. And that's therefore Rupa Goswami said, one has to be enthusiastic. And there we come back to the main principle. The main principle is enthusiasm is defined as endeavoring with intelligence. Interesting definition of enthusiasm. Doesn't say that in the dictionary. I think they give an extra different uh, definition of enthusiasm. But in spiritual circles, enthusiasm means to work in an intelligent way by performing the activities. And then, of course, there may also be obstacles. There also may be reverses. There may also be apparent failures. That one has to continue despite whatever the results are and simply depend on the Lord and be patient. And all of this is given to us by Shiva Rupa Goswami. So unless we hear regularly, read Srila Prabhupada's books, we will not have the intelligence needed to understand how to perform devotional service. But the, the Prabhupada say devotional service is basically common sense. Common sense. Uh, common sense means you have to use both your uh, understanding of how to do things and also apply the intelligence needed in that particular activity. It's like doing deity worship. There is a way to do it. There is Pancharatrikri guidance, how to worship the deity, how to perform the RT, how to perform the... Uh, uh, offerings to the Lord, all of these things are part of the system. When, when, when it's done properly and it's offered in the mood of devotion, then that is, that is a pure activity. And Krishna is pleased by that. And the devotee becomes happy in engaging in devotional service. But we have to be very careful not to get overwhelmed by um, happiness and distress that comes by way of the activities we perform in this material world. Just like, just like somebody will die in our family or someone dear to us will die. We should know that death is there for every living being that has a body. Yes, we may feel unhappy at the loss of someone close to us, but that unhappiness is just the initial expression of our attachment and love for that person. And then after some time, we say, yes, well, yeah. death will happen. It'll happen to me also. We go on in life and continue in our devotions. The calamities come because the nature of material energy is full of calamities. Earthquakes, tidal waves, viruses, wars. These are all parts of the, the lower modes that are prominent in, this, in, the, in the world. And these, all of these things are happening. So the devotee should not become distressed by these things, but should simply take shelter of Krishna and depend on Krishna for guidance and for protection. And therefore, we can live free from the anxiety that comes by trying to enjoy this material world based on getting a particular desired result according to our, our idea of what we want or what we want to avoid. Just depend on Krishna and work in the proper way. Okay. Hare right, Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Maharaj, for a beautiful class again.
very beautiful example you gave maharaj like all the time you give personal examples and that's it's very easy to relate with krishna and see krishna in our examples as you said in uh, in the hotel room you were uh, without wifi and certainly you are a great devotee maharaj but certainly any devotee who chants uh, name of krishna will remember krishna in any situation any situation he will just depend on krishna other day actually uh, i got a small accident with my car but it was a really tiny small accident and i was actually going to iskon calgary and uh, actually i was very happy after accident because it was a tiny one so i thought what was going to happen was a big thing and krishna made it really tiny and small and i was very happy with joy actually so it depends how we see the situation how krishna is actually helping us because uh, i personally think i was telling to my wife i said uh, if i was going for a material thing which i thought earlier that i would do this accident certainly would change my life but because i was going to to see shri radha madan mohan at calgary the things change so it just depends on how we are seeing how krishna is actually helping us and i agreed when you said about the wifi story yes every small or big thing we really depend on krishna maharaj thank you so much maharaj for your class it was such a beautiful class again maharaj hari right, krishna thank you for that calgary example <laughs> thank you maharaj thank you maharaj with your permission can we go to the question answer session maharaj please yes maharaj our very dear devotee His Grace Sukhakara Krishna Prabhu, Hare Krishna, Sukhakara Krishna Prabhu Ji, Dhanvat Pranam, Hare Krishna, Raj Prabhu, Dhanvat Pranam, Krishna. Thank you, Hare Krishna, Chandramani Maharaj. Sukhakara Krishna Prabhu, we are unable to hear you. Hare Krishna. Is it audible? Now it is audible, Prabhu. Yes. Hare Krishna, Raj Prabhu, are you able to hear me? Yeah. So Maharaj uh, just wanted to check up that the big accident which took place in Odisha and so many people died. Is that that the prarabdha karma of all the people who died? They have done the same sinful activity. That's why they all uh, died at the same point. And how does it work? And uh, how does it uh, take uh, shape for a devotee if he was in the same train uh, um, see <clears throat> okay though we are doing devotional service but we don't know past life past life we don't know what we have done so how do we see a devotee coming in the same train how it happens and, and why it happens mm -hmm. wow karma is categorized in different ways mm. there's called instant karma when you do something and you get an equal and opposite reaction immediately yes. say you uh, say something nice to someone and someone will respond in the same way just mm. the instantaneous results of a particular activity that's called instant karma yeah. then there is delayed karma where one get one performs an activity but the the results don't come for a while yet and then yeah. there is um manifest karma manifest karma usually means who we are in terms of our material situation where we who our parents are like that so delayed karmas build up and add up to what is called manifest karma and then they, at a certain time when the maturity of the karma has reached a certain point then it comes and then the last one is mass karma it's what you were referring to And these these are delayed karmas that have been building up for a long time. Yeah. Somehow or other, material energy arranges for all of this, all of these same people to be in the same place, at the same time. 
and then the results of the karma ashes in. It sounds very cruel and mechanical, but the yes. mystery works in that way. Give me an example of how Krishna protects certain, not only devotees, but people in general. Yes. Um, the example was given where <clears throat> this was in Mangalore, I think, many years ago. Yes where <clears throat> there was a big plane crash yeah. where uh, the uh, pilot overran overran the runway and yeah. clad the plane crashed and everybody died on the plane. Now, prior to that, there was one young man. His friend said to him, hey, why don't you come to Mangalore? Uh, I want to be with you. We, we can go on vacation together. I'll pay all of your expenses. I'll even buy your ticket, whatever. And mm. his friend said, you know, it's very nice, but I just don't feel like going. So he rejected. <laughs> he didn't go. And that same plane crashed and everybody died. Oh. So, that was Krishna in the heart telling him, don't go. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So Krishna is there to protect the devotee. And even people are protected by their good karma sometimes. Mm -hmm. They're meant to be in a certain situation that will cause certain calamities. And then mm -hmm. the karma may also divert them away from that into a, into mm -hmm. a situation. If a person has some manifest karma that is meant to come, then that karma will bring them into that situation. Yeah. That law of karma is really strict. It's like yeah. laws of the state. Sometimes, you know, you commit a complete, you have commit a crime. It's like it says on the highway. You're driving along. It says construction site coming up. Hit a word. Yeah. Go to jail, fourteen thousand dollar fine. <laughs> so yeah. You're careful not to hit the worker, and you, do, you drive more carefully. So material energy is there, but we also have to understand that there's a way to <clears throat> avoid the calamities, and that is a way to remember Krishna. By remembering Krishna and working in, in a devotional way, we will be under the care of the spiritual energy. And sometimes we see even devotees <laughs> into horrible situations. But that's Krishna's way of bringing that soul back to him, back to the spiritual world. That is a different thing. But... He protects the devotee by protecting their advancement in Krishna consciousness. Yeah. lost by the devotee to take shelter of Krishna. The Maharaj, my grand, my mother is now 86 years old. She is a Brahminically initiated disciple of Japtak Maharaj. 35 years she has been chanting. But last year she fell down and she is not in a position to remember and she is not able to chant. But whenever I chant, she'll just nod her head, but not able to chant. So I don't know how Krishna is placing her and what can be done. Uh, she's hearing Prabhupada chanting, but not able to put the hand on the bead bag and chant. So I'm really feeling sad that the end part is she's not able to uh, do devotional service. Only I sit with her and chant for two hours. You don't know what's going on inside. You can't really see. Ah, okay, okay. And because she's dedicated her life to service and has a and her spiritual master, she's being protected by Krishna. But still, she mm -hmm. has that body for a certain period of time. So when the time is ready, Krishna will take her. Mm -hmm. But she's not able to chant the Gayatri and all the memory is lost. Little. So I'm feeling sad that, you know, I'm seeing her not able to do. But she's always thinking of Krishna. She always blesses. She will just uh, Hare Krishna shoot. That's success. 
he can remember Krishna. He is probably remembering Krishna, but because he can't express it, people think he's not. Please uh, seek, your seek your blessings, Maharaj, since you are Prabhupada's disciple. Seek your blessings. Well, my best wishes and, and concern that she, that she uh, remains fixed under the lotus feet of the Lord. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Anyone who's given, that, their, anyone who's given their life for devotional service, even if they're physically unable towards the last part of their life, the Lord is not going to reject them. He's going to be there with them. Devotional service is an internal activity. Uh, it's not an external activity. It may manifest externally, but it's internal. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Chibita. Thank you, Raj Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhuji, for attending every day Srimad Bhagavatam and thank you for your association all the time, Prabhu, and beautiful questions you ask because uh, uh, sometimes we are not uh, able to ask questions because of so many conditions, but you know, your questions help so many people in so many ways. So thank you so much, Prabhu. Thank you. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Hare Krishna, Shiva Kumar Prabhuji, Dandava Pranam. Hare Krishna, Prabhu, Dandava Pranam. Hare Krishna Maharaj, the Lord Rams Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, my question is, uh, the time of death is insisted by the Lord in chapter 8, 8 of Bhagavad Gita, that whatever uh, one state of being at the time of death, he attains either the Lord or the next life according to the state of mind. So my question Maharaj is, uh, is uh, what is the uh, reason, uh, reason behind insisting the specifically the time of death more than the whole life itself is something that I wanted to understand much. Well, then it requires further understanding that the culmination of the consciousness at the time of death is based on the activities that one performs in their life. You can't just remember Krishna at the time of death if you have not been performing activities in devotional service. It's not possible. <clears throat> you can't cheat. It's like going to school and not going to the classes, not going to the, the lessons, not doing the homework and like showing up for the final exam and expect to pass. It doesn't work. Similarly, our, that's why we're preparing for the death. Life is actually a pre preparation for death. By becoming Krishna consciousness as much as we can while we're still able to when the time of death comes, then because we have been performing that as activity, it becomes more natural and easy to remember Krishna. Otherwise, when the body is, you know, departing, it's very difficult to remember the Lord unless you've been practiced to remember the Lord during your life. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare this is a practice. Life is a, a preparation for death. Thank you, Prabhuji, for asking the question. So true, Maharaj. So true. If we remember, if we do whatever Srila Prabhupada has said, Krishna will take us and Srila Prabhupada will take care of us over there. That's for sure. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Nina Mataji, Dhanva Pranam. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet. Haribo, Nina, welcome back. <laughs> we miss you so much here at Naperville, Maharaj. I have no questions. I just wanted to offer my humble obeisances at your lotus feet. Actually, Prabhuji before already asked my question, so... Any plan of visiting Naperville soon, Maharaj? Just wanted to ask that. We'll be in Chicago this whole coming weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay, Maharaj. I'll see you there. <laughs> Hare <laughs> Bol, Maharaj. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. You know about the festival, right? Yes, um, I will go there probably on Sunday, Prabhu, uh, Maharaj. Uh, this, this weekend, right? I thought it was next. Yeah. It starts on Thursday through Sunday. 
Okay, Maharaj. I'll see you there. Hari Bol. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you for your association every day in Jirmat Bhagavatam class. And thank you for your services. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for beautiful class and for beautiful question answer session. Dear devotees, if anybody has any last minute questions or any reflections for the class, you can please raise your hand or unmute yourself and go ahead. Otherwise, we will end the session here because Maharaj has so many services. So, dear devotees, let Ma us pray over. Dhanasthanam Prabhuji, uh, Raj uh -huh. Prabhuji, uh, Praladhan Prabhuji. And uh, I'm up offering my obeisances to Maharaj and every Vaishnavas here. Uh, regarding the question Prabhuji had asked about, you know, remembering Lord Sri Krishna at the end. Actually, that is the gist of Srimad Bhagavatam. That's a question. Uh, Maharaj Parikshit had asked that, you know, one, what should one do? Miriamanas, you know, we are all Miriamanas, it means we are all approaching death one by one by one. And what one should do to remember Lord Sri Krishna, there's a whole preparation. Uh, Sukhdev Goswami has narrated in the Tasmat Bharat Sarvatma Bhagavan is for over his Srotavya Kirtitavya Smartavya Ichita Abhayam. So, and that is the gist of it, and Sri Prabhupada and all your devotees have been teaching us how to prepare for that ultimate examination of our life. And uh, uh, we are so grateful to Sri Prabhupada, Chandra Mali Maharaj, and all great devotees who are teaching us every day how to prepare for this ultimate reality of our life. The whole life is actually illusion, but the reality is the death. And uh, the death is the real examination which will take us either to Lord Krishna or the next birth. But uh, as uh, Nanda Maharaj and Vasudha uh, Mai, they all prayed to Lord Krishna that whichever birth you give us, just give us Sadhu Sang. <laughs> if we get Sadhu Sang, then our, our success is assured. That's what I feel and that's what I do. And I wanted to share this reflection. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak, Prabhuji. Hare. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Very, very beautiful input, Prabhu. Very, very beautiful input. And actually, I was also remembering uh, that was that's what uh, Yudhishthir Maharaj, he was surprised, you know, everybody in, in this world dies and we see people going away and we see nothing is going to go with, away with us and we still are attached to this material world. So that's what where he was surprised uh, when he was asked a question. So thank you so much, Prabhu, for that beautiful input. In. So dear devotees, if nobody has any questions or any reflections, we can end the class here. <coughs> Let us pay our obeisances to Maharaj. Vancha Kalapataru